Alright guys, hello, and welcome back to a video that is not the usual free play episode that I throw at you guys on Thursday, because today it is finally time to take a look at Good Company version 0. 0.0. Seven. Now, as you guys may know, I have not had a look into this in the campaign mode yet because um, you can't transfer the save files between 0 0.6 and 0 0.7 versions, probably due to the bigger changes to logistics in this update. So I'm kind of stuck to um, finishing the current campaign mission on 0 0.6 until we can proceed to 0 0.7 there as well. Um, but yeah, so I was kind of contemplating about if I actually wanted to get a normal episode out to you guys today, or um, if I would rather go and introduce you guys to 0 0.7, which I think um, was the right choice to do just that. So, I just want to guide you guys through the update real quick, just give you a quick overview of all the things that happened, and as you guys can see, I've already set myself up here with a big bunch of research tables to um, push ourselves through the milestones real quick, so I can show you guys all the stuff that is new. Let me get out of that, because that already spoils like half the stuff that is new. So, um, first things first, one of the biggest parts of this update is the logistics overall. Now, as you guys may remember from the previous uh, iterations of Good Company, the way that stuff would always work is you would have like these logistics points where you would hire workers for these specific logistics points, and then they would, like within the reach of these logistics points, just always do the tasks that you would have assigned to them. And, um, well, everything's kind of changed a bit now, so I, I, I've kind of prepared things in like the different zones that you guys can see here, so um, let's just go through this, let's just um, do one thing after another, I'm, I'm going to kind of show you around. So, the basic way that these logistics zones now work is if you have a look right here, this is one logistics zone, just set up like this. I think usually they are kind of default to one building being one logistics zone, but you can always change these, right? You can say, okay, I would like to raise this part of the zone and then my logistics zone is only gonna be big, uh, this big right here. And then you can say, okay, you know, I would like to have a new one right here. Now I have a new red logistics zone right there. I can also always go back. I'm not sure if I can actually paint over this. I can't, but I can always go back and just erase this part of the logistics zone, get, just get my pen again and start in this logistics zone right here and drag it out that way to expand it further. So that's the basic way of how to define your actual logistics zones. Now each of these logistics zones has employees assigned to them, just as you would have had it before with logistics points, it's now the employee assigned to the whole logistics zone instead, which I think is a big improvement because that means I can hopefully save out on a few logistics employees in my free play mode sometime in the future, so fingers crossed right there. Now you can also see this little toggle right here which is currently on auto. Now if you put this back to manual, you will kind of find Hopefully, yes, there we go. You'll you'll find the old system like you guys are used to, right? You can just pull everything manually, you can assign everything manually. But what you can also do is you can just keep it on auto. And in that case, you won't need to do anything. The game just kind of assigns everything optimally for you. So like um the ins, the outs kind of just figures out which are the closest small shelving racks and in case you got enough space and everything's just kind of tied in, it will kind of design, uh, design the most optimal and shortest ways possible to optimize your um, production for you and you, you can kind of get rid of the whole assigning everything manually thing that way, which I think is a great improvement because um, I mean, you guys know me, I was always kind of happy with the old logistics system, but I think this can just kind of save you, firstly, tons of work, and I mean, I'm in like the 14th or 15th episode roundabout-ish in my free play mode right now, and at some point it just gets very, very annoying because you have to make a lot of these connections, and it just becomes more and more, so having this auto assignment is absolutely awesome, I think. Now, the way that the incoming pallets work, and you guys may see this right here, right? This has changed. There is delivery areas now, which is where you can put down your own pallets. So there's courier pallets right here, where you can then just order stuff as you may be used to it so far. You can use them to buy, you can also use them to sell. You can always define right here if stuff is going to be output or input, if it's going to be bought or if it's going to be sold. These conveyor parts are just a bit weird because, you know, uh, I think the game needed an output for that small shelving rack, so I just decided to put them back here. Um, but yeah, so this is basically where you can just define, you know, 
how much um well how much am I actually going to buy? How much am I going to sell all that good stuff? You can up and down, well, increase and decrease the bandwidth as you may be used to, just like this. And everything else kind of works the same way in that regard. And then your uh, employee just goes around here and starts picking up these goods that you then assign to him. So that's uh, basically the way, that, the way that that works. Everything within one logistics zone just becomes kind of interconnected like that. Now say I want another logistics zone up here, but as you can see right here, I don't have any delivery area, right? Now what I can do, and this is an awesome feature of this whole logistics thing as well, is I can have couriers going around moving stuff about the place for me. So I can still place a courier part right here, but as you guys will be able to see, this one firstly looks a bit different, and secondly, I cannot buy and sell unless I'm in a delivery area. But what I can be doing, if you have a look right here, we've got the courier routes. Now you can see all my parts that I have gotten distributed across the whole factory, and I could say, all right, I would like a new route. I would like to start right here. I would like to end right here. And um, well, now I can probably, let me see. We can, I can firstly add an employee. And um, now this courier route is defined. And whenever you can see, well, firstly, you can see, obviously, these are the outputs of my first zone, and these are the inputs and outputs of my second zone. Now, when I start actually having a parts production up here, which starts requiring certain things, and you can already see the guy move about with his little cart right here, which, by the way, that cart is super awesome. I think he can probably uh, transport multiple things with that. But say uh, we want to now pull up a production right here, right? We want to maybe um, have two basic workbenches, we would like to be doing some, uh, let's say, some simple cases, and we would like to be doing some rods. So that means we will now need metal and plastic. And I'm just going to put like a small shelf right here as well, just to make things a bit complete. Not really the most ideal way of doing things, but just kind of to get things somewhat going. Now, what we also obviously need is a logistics employee right here. We'll just get some employees for the place, just like that. And now, as you can see, this courier guy automatically starts moving all the goods that I now need over here to that pallet so that we can use that in production and it will be used by our courier then put into these shelves these guys will start producing away and that's gonna be it that's gonna be the way that this works and um, yeah so that is going to be the way that this should be working what I'm kind of interested in and I want to just quickly explore this with you guys as well is these input no not these inputs the outputs rather if they also get moved back uh for sale which it doesn't look like that's the case so i'm thinking that is probably something you'll have to either configure manually or hmm interesting so i think that's something you'll probably have to configure manually for it to actually work so what you could always do is you can always go to manual and say all right now i've got my rods right here nope not like that. Wow, okay. That's interesting. So that's something I'm not actually quite aware of. I will try and uh, let you guys know in the comments how that actually then works on getting the goods back, because there's definitely a way. And, um, well, I have apparently just not properly researched that, so I'm really sorry for that. But I am very sure I'm going to be able to figure that out, and I'm going to either throw in some post commentary or let you guys know down below in the comments or like in a little text in the video right now. But yeah, so that's the whole way that this logistics zone um, thing works, that the couriers work, and I think that it is actually very, very useful. But that's not by far not the only thing that changed. So let me speed all the way over here to the different part of the factory. This, by the way, is just where I'm analyzing all my single cell batteries right now. But let's speed over to here. And you can already see this one is a very interesting one, right? So as you guys can see right here, we've got our little courier pallet set up with some metal coming in. And it's like super stacked with rods, by the way. But um, there has been a lot of additions to the conveyor system. Now, firstly, you've got these automatic retrieval segments, which are absolutely awesome because these can now manu well, not manually, automatically rather, 
pick up stuff from shelving racks and throw it out onto the conveyors. I've also tried to attach them to the courier pallets, but that does not seem to work, so this is kind of your only possibility. Um, but you've got these things, which are really, really nice and helpful, and then you have got overhead conveyors, or well, overhead transporters is what they're called, and uh, basically, that finally allows you to now move conveyors about the place without blocking yourself out of every path that you want to use. And I think that is really awesome, because if you guys remember my fleet free play series, I already had some issues with that before. Uh, you've got three different sizes. You've got S, M, and L. I just built them all right here, so you guys can have a quick look at how these actually look and work. And yeah, I think that is a really awesome thing. Also, what you then have on top of that is you have got new automated machines. You've got metal processing machines and you've got case production machines, which we can just check out right here. So metal processing machines are doing gears, rods, metal sundries and conveyor parts and small case machines are doing all the, well, standard cases, you know, not known like plastic, uh, no, not plastic, known bot uh, chassis thingies or whatever, but all the plastic cases, metal, wooden, reinforced, simple, all of these it can do. Um, doesn't uh, look like it can do stuff like windowed cases though, for example, so that's a very interesting point to keep uh, in mind. But as you can see right here, I've just set one up that's making our metal rods right here, then pushing them out, and out they go onto the small shelving rack. So i got to say, that's a very nice thing to have. It, it is very far down the line for milestones, I think it was like the, uh, the fifth milestone right here to actually get there, so it kind of comes when you get the precision workbench and the pick and place machine. So you will have to spend a lot of time in the game before you actually get to that point. But just being able to automatically build uh, metal rods and gears and all that stuff that you really, uh, really need a lot of without having any employee costs and not really minding it too much, I think is a pretty, pretty nice thing to have right there. So um, that's kind of a few more of the major changes that I hear, but th there's been another few ones uh, which I would just kind of like to go through with you guys. Now firstly, you guys may have already noticed this is not the free play map you are used to. And that is because there is a new free play map now. Um, it's an additional one, so you can still play the old one if you so like. But um, this one is now called Silicon Summer. Just very fitting with the current time of the year. You're very nicely located at the beach. Got a nice little lighthouse right here. Got some awesome decorations around the place. Map looks absolutely awesome, as always. Uh, I have to say, and I think the developers said that basically it also gives you a bit more area to work with than if you were on the old map. So just something to keep in mind right there. Also, a new, a very handy change are these things right here that you guys may have already noticed. They're kind of distributed all over the place inside the walls of your factory buildings. And there's these small one square ones, but there's also bigger ones. Let me just see if I can find one right here. See, here's one. So, as I've already demonstrated down here for you guys, you can now move these conveyors through these holes. So, that gives you just kind of a few more places to actually build some conveyors so that you don't run into the issue of, oh, my gate just clogged up with conveyors, now I can't use any more. There's just a few more access points to each and every building that way that you can use with these conveyors. Also, there's a new product now available for you guys, and that is the cassette player. Um, just another pretty cool and fancy thing. I think the developers already kind of hinted away at that on Twitter ahead of time. And, um, well, just another nice product that you can build. As far as I can see, and I guess that it's always the same, it actually um, will hit you before the pocket computer. So as you guys may know, you always get like alternatives. So like here, it's either pocket computer or gaming device, I think. So before that, the cassette player will actually hit you already. And then after that, you've got like courier bot or um, what was the other flavor? Cleaner bot. Cleaner bot was the other flavor 
and uh, then it goes on to like drones and the likes. But yeah, so a nice little product to use for you dudes right there. Also, as we're already here in the market screen, you will see right here that there is phase progression now, like manual phase progression. You guys may remember that before it was basically that a market stayed at a uh, specific phase for an amount of time and then it moved on. Now, as you can see right here, that has changed to units sold, which is uh, quite a difference, I'll have to say. And um, you can now choose manually when you want to progress a phase. You always have to wait at least until you've got the 80 units sold. Um, we were talking with uh, the developers before on the Discord about like the possibility of them adding in some sort of, um, well, you know, some sort of um, drawback if you do it late. I'm not sure they implemented that yet, so I will make sure to like let you know down below in the comments again or throw a bit of text at you right here in the video if that actually ended up happening the way that I know it right now. It's kind of, you can advance the market whenever you want, but it may be possibly the way um, that now or sometime in the future, if you progress it very late, you will have some kind of drawback for doing that. So. I will make sure to let you guys know uh, a bit more about that right there. Another thing that's actually very, very nice is the recipes for crafting have been streamlined a lot. And we can have a quick look at this in research. Um, for example, with the circuits, because as you guys may remember from my uh, free play series, that was always a lot of work to actually get these things working. Because I was making logic circuits, and the way that I was making logic circuits is I needed the simple circuits first, and I needed the circuit boards and everything. Now, you can see right here, required materials, circuit board, electronic parts, plastic plastic parts. So it's a lot more simple uh, to set up and a lot more streamlined and also then noticeable once you progress up because now for the programmable circuit you only need a simple circuit. If you want to go microcontroller you only need multi-layer PCBs, integrated circuit, electronic parts. So that's also very simple. And um, also over here, you know, logic circuit, multi-layer PCB. So the further you progress up, it gets a bit more complicated, but it is by far not as complicated as it was before, as you guys can see here. So um, that's just kind of to simplify things a bit more for you when making these things. And I think it's a really nice quality of life change. It was obviously kind of a bit more challenging, you know, to cram everything in and to make everything work, also financially before, but with this change, I think that is a good way to go when it's probably just kind of a bit more of a chill way for you of doing these things. So in my opinion, definitely a really nice change to have. Now um, moving on then, also what I have noticed, and I'm not sure they actually mentioned this anywhere, is they have finally ended up streamlining the crafting times for certain items. Well, not for certain items, but for all the items. If you guys remember, I, I was always kind of um, saying that what really didn't help me personally was that um, a lot of these crafting times that we had in the old version were like 0 0.27 days or 0 0.67 days and if you wanted to kind of, you know, match everything up and you had like one product producing at 0 0.27 days and then out of that product you needed like two every 0 0.67 days, you had absolutely no clue of how much you actually had and how much you actually needed and it was just kind of a bit annoying to work with because um, you know, they changed it over to that system because a lot of other things like for example the product um, design um, overview always showed everything in how much products took in amount of days. Um, so they kind of tried streamlining that a bit more with those old patches, but with everything then being like 0.27 days and whatever, that didn't really help out too much. So what they actually went ahead and did is they actually made usable figures out of it. So you, for example, with a single cell battery, for a tinker table you have one day, for a chemistry table you have got 0 0.6 days, so there's like no, um, like, two digits behind um, the comma that you actually need to take care of, only one, and I think that is a lot more manageable. Um, 
it is kind of a bit slower, I think, because if you look at this now, well, it's definitely a lot slower, actually. If you look at this now, you actually take 10 seconds for a single cell battery, whereas before you would have taken, well, actually, it's like 11-ish seconds, 12, 11-ish. Um, before, with the chemistry tables, it would have taken you four. So that's quite the big difference. I'm not sure if that actually has an economic impact. I would imagine that they probably balanced against that to keep um, track of that issue. Another nice thing that they actually added in, and I'm pretty sure this was not in, in the previous update, is this button right here. I intentionally didn't upgrade this tinker table right here, just to show you guys that this is a thing. Um, you know, maybe I missed it in 0 0.65, could be a possibility, so if I did, please make sure to let me know down below. Um, but one way or another, really nice quality of life change is this. Done. There goes the workstation upgrade. You don't need to tear down the tables anymore, then mess up all your logistics. Well, I mean, that's not really that much of a possibility this update anymore anyways, but you don't need to tear it down anymore and build a new one and reassign everything. You just click that upgrade workstation button and you're done. So that is definitely a very nice and very helpful change. Also, Another quick thing that you will notice down here is the blueprint designer is now down here. You don't actually need, and I don't think you even have anymore, the um, design desk. So if you just look around right here, right, there's no design desk anywhere to be found. And that's cause you have this blueprint designer button right here. And um, another thing that is tied in, well, not tied into this, but you know, that you will find out on the Blueprint Designer, is that actually you have the possibility of now overfulfilling on market requirements. And you can see the requirements, I think, are also already kind of high because I researched this much stuff. Um, or actually, they may have changed. Let me look at this. Sound quality 1.2. So I think what has also changed is that they have raised the, the stats on all these parts and then the required stats have also kind of risen so definitely an interesting change right there that will hopefully help make things a bit more simple too but with that said you can see right here for example if i if i would now like just take an advanced audio module which will obviously be total overkill but right now you've got a maximum price of 300. if i was to do this i'm at 1k which you can see right here I'm very much over fulfilling this stuff. And if I now go to battery life and I would get like a battery matrix in there, which once again is absolute overkill, I would get to 1.6k. So you can very, very much over fulfill the market requirements and that way actually get more money out of the final product because the higher the value of, well, not the value, but the higher the, um, the higher the attributes of your product, the higher the actual sales value of the product. So that does have a big impact, and that's quite, kind of what they call premium products, which makes a lot of sense to me. What I actually want to try here real quick is, okay, so I could actually get more money out of this. The obvious issue here being weights now, so that kind of lowers the market appeal. But as you can see right there, that even further increases the maximum price so that's definitely a way that you can now go as well and i think a very interesting one because so far i've always just tried keeping it at a manageable point where we were always at like 3.5 4.0 because you wouldn't really get more out of it anyways if you were to go higher up so i just kind of tried managing costs that way but i think with this premium product concept it may be a very nice and very interesting idea to try and go the other way as well so uh yeah that's about it um i think i have covered about everything that you guys need to know about this update so um i'm just gonna place a quick cut right here before saying bye to you guys because i am going to find out about the courier bots real quick not the courier bots but the courier routes real quick so i'll be right back with you guys all right guys and back i am and as you can see I have finally found out. So, um, it was a pretty simple solution. It's actually getting automatically configured just as everything else at the courier system. So, nothing to actually worry about. The only thing that you need to do is you need to go to your courier palette and down here at the bottom right, this is where you define what you actually want to be selling. So, you need to predefine that this stuff has to be sold, which I think is a good system because otherwise, you know, the automatic system may end up selling off stuff that you would actually like to keep for your own purposes. So, 
you just go here to add new and you've got these uh, filter possibilities as well if you want to use them and uh, then you just select whatever you want to sell. I just selected my uh, rods, I selected my simple cases and as you can see the courier is now moving these things over to be sold and that is now it. That is actually finally covering everything about this, what I have to say, I think, is a really, really, really nice update. Now, the only thing that's up for debate for me personally still is how we are going to move on with free play because I cannot carry over my uh, save file to 0 0.7. So I will make sure to ask you guys down below in the comments about this. And please, if you care about this at all, please make sure to uh, let me know what you guys think down below in the comments because I would really, really appreciate your guys' input on that. But with that said, guys, this is about everything that you need to know about update 0.7 of Good Company. I do hope that you guys enjoyed this video, that you could use this information, that I m managed to answer all your questions. And if you have any more, please make sure to let me know down below, and I'll try my best to help you out with those as well. But as always, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Well, yeah this very special episode this time and uh, if you did please make sure to hit that like button down below and if you think I should make more videos like these in the future about significant updates of the games that I'm playing with you guys please also make sure to let me know about that down below in the comments and uh, with that said if you're new to the channel and you did enjoy this episode and you would like to stay around for more good company content or other videos that I am publishing on this channel very regularly as well, please make sure to hit that sub button down below and the bell icon right next to it to stay up to date and all that kind of stuff. And with that said guys, as always, I would like to thank you all very much for watching. I hope I helped you out a ton, I hope you like these new changes in good company, and I hope I'll see you in the next one guys. Ciao.